we, we are sliding. We are sliding so fast. It's happening so quick, folks. You, you, you must become aware of, of how quickly this is happening. And much of the professing church is going to go with it, I'm afraid. Unless there's an awakening in our generation, a complete and total awakening. It's a time for battle. It's a time to be reaching men and women and children with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a time to be living righteously. It's a time for you and I to have that sweet savor of Christ following us everywhere we go. It's a time for the body of Christ to look like the body of Jesus Christ. To be engaged in the work of the body of Jesus Christ, which is and always has been the redemption of fallen humanity. It's a time for you and I to be within our house and say, God, strengthen me. Visit me, O Lord. O Holy Spirit of the living God, touch my mind again. Open the word of God to me. Strengthen me by your power. Lead me, O God, to somebody today out on the street that just needs to know you. Somebody behind the counter, somebody sitting on a bench, somebody that I meet during the course of the day in my business. Just lead me to somebody. Let me be in the work of God. My eyes shall be upon the faithful. In other words, I will not hang around with spiritually like people. I will not associate with those that are mixed. My friends will not be sitting beside me this morning in the house of God declaring themselves Christians and clubbing on Saturday night. I will not associate with that crowd. I will not go there. You wouldn't believe the logic that we deal with. I mean, some people who commit adultery, then they get on their knees and open their Bibles after the act itself and then encourage one another. It's, it's, it's insanity. I mean, just a little indulgence, a little bit of pleasure. What harm could come from that? I mean, it was done in secret. Who would ever see this thing anyway? And God knows I've fought the battle hard and long and, and tired. First Corinthians chapter six, beginning at verse nine. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know that? Do not be deceived. But he, he goes on, he says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, folks. Do not be deceived. Do not let some hyper grace preacher lead you into these practices and tell you this is okay. It's not okay. Do not be deceived. We're not saved to do these things. Paul goes on and says in verse 11, and such were some of you, but you are washed, but you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the spirit of God. Sanctified means you were set apart to glorify God and you were given the power to maintain that separation from your old lifestyle. I'm not troubled in my heart about your self-esteem. I'm not troubled in my heart about whether or not you feel good about yourself, whether or not life is turning out like you want it to turn out or whether or not your checkbook is balanced. There's only one thing that gave me a sleepless night. There's only one thing that troubled me all throughout the morning, and that is this. Within a hundred years, a great majority of people in this building will possibly be in hell. Society is lost.